My topic is on 2022 American Society of Anesthesiologists Practice Guidelines for Management of Difficult Airway. So these updated guidelines replace the practice guidelines for the management of difficult airway, which was uh, formulated in 2012 and published in 2013. And these guidelines specifically address uh, difficult airway management. It provides new evidence obtained from the recent scientific literature along with findings from new surveys of the expert consultants. Uh, these guidelines provide consideration for the development of difficult airway management strategy, including considerations for awake airway management, uh, an update for the equipment for standard and advanced difficult airway management. Uh, this mainly recommends uh, supplement oxygen sub administration before initiating and throughout difficult airway management, including the extubation process, and offer both non-invasive and invasive alternatives for difficult airway management. And these guidelines mainly emphasize on the awareness of the passage of time during the difficult airway management and limiting the number of attempts of different devices and techniques and provide recommendations for the extubation of difficult airway. Uh, it has also formed new algorithms for both adult and pediatric difficult airway management. Coming to the definition of the difficult airway, a difficult airway includes a clinical situation in which anticipated or unanticipated difficulty or failure is experienced by a physician trained in anesthesia care, including difficulty in mask ventilation, difficulty in laryngoscopy, ventilation using a supraglottic airway, or a difficulty in tracheal intubation, extubation, or a difficulty in securing an invasive airway. Difficulty in face mask ventilation is uh, defined as not possible to provide adequate ventilation, which is confirmed by the ATCO2 uh, detection, which may occur due to inadequate mask seal or excessive gas leak or excessive resistance to regress of gas. And next is difficult laryngoscopy. Difficult laryngoscopy is defined when it's not possible to visualize any portion of the vocal cords after multiple attempts of laryngoscopy. Next is the difficult supraglottic airway ventilation. It, it is when it is not possible to provide adequate ventilation because of one or more following problems, that is uh, difficulty in uh, securing a supraglottic airway uh, or supraglottic airway placement requiring multiple attempts or inadequate airway seal or excessive gas leak or uh, excessive resistance to ingress of gas. Next is difficult or failed tracheal in intubation. Tracheal intubation, which is requiring multiple attempts or tracheal intubation failing after even multiple attempts. Dif difficult or failed tracheal extubation, the loss of airway patency and adequate ventilation after removal of tracheal tube or supraglottic airway from the patient with a known or suspected difficult airway. Next is difficulty in uh, securing an uh, invasive airway. Any anatomical features or abnormalities reducing or preventing the successful placement of an invasive airway into the trachea through the front of the neck. Next, uh, uh, signs of inadequate ventilation includes absent or inadequate ET ETCO2, absent or inadequate chest movement, absent or inadequate breath sounds, auscultatory signs of severe obstruction, sinus, gastric air entry or dilatation, decreasing or inadequate oxygen saturation, absent or inadequate exhaled gas flow as measured by spirometry, anatomical lung abnormalities as detected by the uh, lung ultrasound or hemodynamic changes associated with hypoxemia or hypocarbia, uh, main, mainly uh, any hypertension, tachycardia or bradycardia. And additional clinical symptoms may include changes in the mental status or somnolescence. Coming to the guidelines uh, proposed. First, uh, for evaluation of the airway. Before initiation of an anesthetic care or airway management, ensure that an airway risk assessment is performed by the person who is responsible for the airway management. So, uh, examples or anatomical measures including malampati or modified malampati scores, thyromental distance, sternomental distance, interincisa distance, neck circumference, uh, ratio of neck circumference to thyromental uh, distance. Uh, higher mental distance ratio and measurements obtained from the ultrasound, including uh, skin to high out distance, tongue volume, and distance from the skin to epiglottis. So, when available in patients' medical re uh, records, evaluate the demographic information, clinical conditions, diagnostic tests, 
and the questionnaire which is responsible for assessing the difficult airway. So before initiation of anesthetic care or airway management, always conduct an airway physical examination and identify the physical characteristics that may uh, indicate a potential for a difficult airway. So additional evaluation to characterize the likelihood nature of the anticipated airway difficulty may include bedside endoscopy, virtual laryngoscopy or bronchoscopy or three-dimensional printing. Assess multiple airway features to determine the patient's potential for a difficult airway or aspiration. Uh, next comes to the preparation of the difficult airway management. Ensure that the airway management equipment is available in the room. The airway management uh, items which is which has to be prepared for a difficult airway management includes a self-inflating resuscitation bag, suction tubing, yonkers, suction catheters, and appropriate connectors, various sizes of face masks, various sizes of oral and nasal airways, various sizes and types of laryngoscopic blades and handles, various sizes and types of tracheal tubes, tracheal tube in introducer or for or like bougie for adult patients, tracheal tube stillet, equipment for emergency invasive airway management, various sizes of supraglottic airways, water-soluble medical lubricant, nasal cannula, oxygen face mask, video laryngoscope with appropriate stylus, and the standard ASA monitors, and anesthetic induction drugs maintenance and rescue medications kept ready. Ensure that a portable storage unit that contains specialized equipment for difficult airway management is in immediately available. The items that uh, that, uh, that are to be uh, stored in the portable storage unit include oral and nasal airways of different, si different sizes, supraglottic airways, uh, as I mentioned before, nasal cannula, tracheal tubes, uh, rigid blades of alternate design and size for intubation, tracheal tube guides, uh, intubating supraglottic airway, video laryngoscope, optical laryngoscope, intubating video stillet, flexible intubating bronchoscope along with to topical anesthetic and equipment and airway bite block and entry catheter, emergency airway equipment including emergency uh, uh, equipments for invasive airway management, jet ventilation equipment and other uh, items like airway exchange catheters of assorted sizes, um, uh, multiple in exhaled uh, carbon dioxide directors, and the laminated version of uh, local, locally accepted difficult airway algorithm to be kept ready before starting on a difficult airway case. Ensure that a skilled individual is present immediately available to assist with the airway management. Inform the patient or the responsible person for the special risk uh, pertaining to the management of difficult airway. Properly position the patient and administer supplemental oxygen before initiating a uh, difficult airway and also continue to deliver supplement oxygen whenever feasible and throughout the process of the difficult airway management. Ensure that a minimum basic monitoring is according to the AC standard is available uh, during, before, during and also after management of all patients with difficult airway. Coming to the guidelines for anticipated difficult airway management. Uh, always have a pre-formulated uh, strategy for the management of anticipated difficult airway. This will mainly depend upon the anticipated surgery, condition of the patient, patient cooperation, consent, skills and preferences of the anesthesiologist. All, all identify strategy for awake intubation, the patient who can be adequately ventilated but difficult to in intubate, the patient who, no, uh, who cannot be ventilated and intubated, and also difficulty with emergency invasive airway rescue. When appropriate, always perform awake intubation. So, uh, uh, it is uh, when, uh, when it is dif difficult ventilation using face mask or supraglottic airway or increased risk of aspiration, and the patient is likely incapable of uh, tolerating a brief apneic episode, and there is expect expected difficulty with emergency invasive airway rescue. Always provide. Uh, opportunities for supplemental oxygen uh, administration uh, throughout the procedure, including oxygen delivery by nasal cannulae, face mask, or supraglottic insufflation. Uh, uh, the uncooperative or pediatric patient may restrict options for difficult airway management in uh, in uh, providing uh, oxygen administration throughout the procedure. So always make arrangements for uh, uh, managing such cases. Proceed with airway management after induction of uh, general anesthesia when the benefits uh, override the risk. 
for either awake or anesthetic in intubation airway maneuver can be attempted so before attempting uh, intubation of the anticipated difficult airway always choose between uh, either a non invasive or invasive approach management if non invasive approach is selected identify Uh, preferred sequence of non-invasive devices to be used for the airway management. So, if difficulties are uh, encountered with individual techniques, always combination techniques can be used. Non-invasive devices include uh, rigid blades, uh, alternative device incisors, VDL, fle uh, uh, flexible intubation scopes, sup supraglottic airway devices, and lighted or op optical stillets, and alternative optical laryngoscopes and rigid bronchoscopes. Combination techniques may include uh, direct or vi video laryngoscopy combined with either optical video stillet, flexible scope intubation, airway exchange catheter, retroglade placed guide wire, or supraglottic uh, airway placement. Uh, supraglottic airway combined with either optical stillet, flexible scope intubation, or retroglade placed guide wire. These are the combination techniques. So be aware of the uh, passage of time always and the number of attempts and make uh, uh, make always uh, be aware of the oxygen saturation throughout the procedure. Uh, provide a test mask uh, mask ventilation after each attempt uh, when feasible and limit the number of attempts at tracheal intubation or supraglottic airway placement to avoid potential injury and complications. If an elective invasive approach to the airway is selected, identify uh, preferred intervention and always ensure that an invasive airway is performed by the individual who is trained in invasive airway technique whenever possible. If selected approach is uh, failed, identify an alternate approach. Always uh, uh, make sure the ECMO is available and initiate uh, ECMO if whenever uh, uh, feasible. Coming to the recommendation for the unanticipated and uh, emergency difficult airway management, always call for help. Optimize oxygenation throughout the difficult airway management. So whenever appropriate, refer to an algorithm or cognitive aid uh, when unanticipated difficult airway is encountered. So determine the benefit of waking and uh, restoring the spontaneous breathing. Determine the benefit of non-invasive versus uh, invasive approach to the airway management. So, if non-invasive approach is selected, identify a preferred sequence of non-invasive devices, uh, which uh, device has to be used first and next. If difficulties in encountered with each individual techniques, as I uh, mentioned be before, combination techniques can be performed. Uh, always be aware of the saturation, the passage of time, and limit the number of uh, attempts. If an invasive approach is uh, uh, necessary, always identify the preferred intervention and make sure the trained individual is available both uh, both for uh, anticipated and unanticipated difficult airway. Uh, make sure that ECMO is available whenever uh, appropriate and uh, feasible. Coming to the confirmation of tracheal intubation, always uh, confirm tracheal intubation using uh, capnography. When uncertain about the location of the tracheal tube, determine whether the, uh, whether either to remove it uh, and attempt additional or use additional techniques to confirm the position of the tracheal tube. So additional techniques for confirming the tracheal tube include visualization uh, by flexible bronchoscopy, ultrasonography, or radiography. Now coming to the algorithm of uh, difficult airway management. Algorithm uh, for adult uh, difficult airway management. Pre intubation, before attempting intubation, choose between either an awake or post induction airway strategy. So, the choice of strategy and technique should be made by the clinician who is managing the airway. First, uh, if suspected difficult laryngoscopy, uh, if, uh, if yes, uh, so, so suspect either uh, difficult ventilation with face mask or supraglottic airway. If no, if uh, I look for any significant risk of aspiration. If no, sus suspect difficult emergency invasive airway. So if there is uh, no difficulty in difficulty in laryngoscopy, intubation attempt uh, after uh, can be made after the induction of an general anesthesia. So if it fails, limit the number of attempts and consider calling for help. Uh, Look whether whether the patient can be mask uh, mask ventilated or not. If mask ventilation is adequate, as confirmed by the ATCO2, then uh, enter in, we enter into the non-emergency pathway. If ventilation that is ventilation is adequate, but intubation is unsuccessful, 
so you have, we limit the number of attempts and consider awakening the patient and restore the spontaneous breathing if if uh, consider also alternative intubation approaches and make, uh, make sure that invasive access or feasibility of other options is available if uh, the multiple attempts fails or a deteriorating ventilation occurs we enter into the emergency part three that is uh, both mask ventilation and also intubation is difficult so consider attempting a su uh, supraglottic airway. If supraglottic ventilation is uh, adequate, then uh, it is a non-emergency pathway. But even the supraglottic airway is not, not adequate. That is, we cannot intubate, cannot ventilate, and also cannot secure an uh, supraglottic airway. Then we enter into an emergency pathway. So always call for help. Limit the uh, number of attempts. Be aware of the passage of time and uh, oxygen saturation and attempt alternative intubation approaches as we prepare for the emergency invasive airway to call for help for an emergency in, uh, invasive airway. When intubation, uh, if the suspected dif difficult laryngoscopy and mask ventilation, if the intubation attempt, making uh, intubation attempt with the patient awake is, uh, if awake intubation is success, we enter into the non-emergency uh, non pathway. Whereas when when uh, there is a difficulty in securing a invasive uh, access, always consider other options and also postpone the case. Coming to the difficult algorithm of a pediatric patient, before attempting intubation, choose between either an uh, as uh, as as an adult patient, choose between either a, whether you are going to do an awake intubation or post induction airway strategy. Always a strategy and technique should be made by the managing uh, physician, managing clinician. So in pediatric, if there is a suspected difficult laryngoscopy and also sus uh, suspected uh, difficult ventilation with face mask or supraglottic airway, consider an awake or sedated approach. So uh, always optimize oxygenation throughout throughout the procedure. So uh, in um, in pediatric patients, always consider transferring to a tertiary center if feasible. Uh, and make awake intubation. If awake intubation fails, consider other options of uh, securing an airway or postpone the case. Whereas, if the intubation attempt after uh, induction of general anesthesia fails, limit uh, as in adults, limit the uh, limit the attempts of uh, securing the airway and always call for help. In pediatrics, always uh, ensure adequate anesthetic depth is maintained. And also assess the oxygenation, oxygen saturation, and ventilation with face mask or supraglottic airway, which is confirmed by the ATCO2. If uh, uh, oxygenation and ventilation is maintained with my face mask or supraglottic airway, we enter into the non emergency pathway. So consider emerging uh, the patient that is restoring the spontaneous uh, respiration and uh, limit the attempts, reassess ventilation up to each attempt while securing the airway. If it fails or uh, deteriorating uh, de uh, ventilation deteriorates, we, we enter into the emergency pathway. That is, we are not able to ventilate uh, either with face mask or supraglottic airway and also cannot intubate. So exclude or treat any anatomical and functional obstruction or consider always calling for invasive access or ECMO, which is imp uh, when it's impossible to um, both ventilate and intubate. So always call for help and call for invasive access an alternative intubation um, in meanwhile while uh, calling for invasive as, uh, access uh, choose alternate uh, alternative intubation approaches and also prepare for the emergency invasive airway and uh, secure the airway with uh, invasive techniques thank you sir okay so you said that this is uh... Which year publication? Which, uh, 2022. Guidelines? 2022 guidelines. 22 guidelines. Okay. Yes. So we have earlier we had our own Indian Society of uh, Anesthesia yes, uh, Difficult Airway Society guidelines published yes. in 2019 and 20, I think. Uh, so the main modification, what I understand from your presentation, is ultimately they have included ECMO. Yes, sir, they, have included the an ECMO. Are, huh? they have included an ECMO and also they have included uh, uh, all uh, attempts to maintain oxygenation throughout the procedure. Yeah, that has been their uh, 
with an acyl cannula or the reason uh, for uh, a topic called difficult airway is because before 1983 when peshagiri uh, rao mallambatti published his uh, mallambatti score to assess the airway in, uh, in prior to general anesthesia when you plan for laryngoscopy and intubation there was no concept of a difficult airway at all people were very much unaware and lot of mortality was taking place because people could not intubate could not ventilate that scenario happened quite frequently especially in maternity side uh, during cesarean section because at the time cesareans were done only under general anesthesia so the maximum mortality happened in uh, pregnant women that was one of the reasons where the guidelines changed from general anesthesia to final for cesarean section to avoid the risk of uh, uh, hypoxic death as well as aspiration and uh, these complications so nowadays you know because of the repeated uh, insistence on doing a the thorough pre operative assessment of the airway to find out whether it will be a manageable or a difficult airway so that we can avoid the problem of hypoxia induced morbidity like uh, cerebral hypoxemia and uh, vegetative life or cardiac arrest and death due to inadequate oxygenation can be easily prevented if you make a thorough it's assessment of the airway and classify it into anticipated difficult airway and a normal airway so if you know beforehand before you start anesthesia that it is going to be a difficult airway you will be well prepared and you will keep help you will keep all the difficult airway cart you will keep the additional equipment needed for all that and manage the situation but when you are caught unaware thinking that it may be a normal easy intubation and you suddenly land up unexpectedly or unanticipatedly in a situation where you are not able to succeed in intubating and maintaining the ventilation which is the most important thing as an anesthesiologist for all of us to do that is where you get into this problem where you have to know so earlier they were talking about keeping four plans in your mind plan a plan b plan c and plan d and this plan a is a routine induction paralysis with a muscle relaxant doing a laryngoscopy and putting in endotracheal tube in the first or second attempt without any difficulty then it becomes a routine affair which 90% of the time happens so so this is called plan a after three attempts in plan a when you are not able to intubate the trachea with an endotracheal tube and patient is starting to desaturate at the time because you have already pre oxygenated he is able to withstand the lack of oxygen for that time <clears throat> and when the patient starts desaturating your plan a has failed now you go to plan b the plan b is to insert a laryngeal mask airway in the pharynx so that you don't have to necessarily go into the trachea and try to maintain the oxygenation through the laryngeal mask airway which may be successful in almost 75 to 80% of the cases so you are able to maintain the oxygenation and if it is seated well and if it is ventilating the lungs adequately and if the surgery is of such nature that it does not require a strict endotracheal intubation like say a limb procedure a, a, a lower limb procedure or upper limb procedure not a laparotomy requiring muscle relaxant and uh, paralysis and uh, surgical requirements are not that high you can continue to maintain the anesthesia with the same supraglottic airway and finish off the surgery also that is plan b but if there is a difficulty in introducing the laryng uh, supraglottic airway and maintaining the oxygenation then the third option is going back to plan c is removing the telma 
and trying to place the face mask, get somebody else's help also to hold the jaw, lift the jaw, and then squeeze the back so two persons can try to mask ventilate the patient. That is what is called the rescue ventilation at plan C. If that is also not possible, you are neither able to intubate nor able to place a supraglottic airway or able to ventilate with the mask, then you land up in plan D situation where except for a quick emergency, invasive front of neck access is going to be the only solution for saving the patient. So these are the four important plans which, which you earlier guidelines were doing that. So here, what we are repeatedly trying to improve is never allow the patient to become hypoxemic. Somehow push in oxygen into the patient's lung and keep the oxygenation of the patient always at a satisfactory level. That is what all the guidelines want to impress on. And if you are able to do that, the patient will be safe and you can manage that patient without any problem. And do not delay the any emergency procedure that is required in cases where you are not able to intubate and ventilate, like the print of next access. For that, cricothyrotomy is the, in adults, that is the best and safest method by which we can pump in oxygen into the patient's lung. So cricothyrotomy, earlier guidelines were saying that you must always check your cricothyrotomy equipment in cases of anticipated difficulty airway as well as as a routine procedure you must always make sure that the cricothyrotomy set is readily available and you must have had experience or at least trained in mannequin techniques to use how to do the cricothyrotomy by palpating the cricothyroid membrane and making a hole in that and trying to do the Feldinger maneuver to introduce the tube through that and Levitan, the person who said that if you make what is called a Levitan's laryngeal shake or handshake, where you identify the trichothyroid membrane in the neck extended position in all difficult airway cases and mark it prior to starting anesthesia, then when you land up in plan D where you have to do an emergency Cricothyrotomy, it will be easy for you to make the incision in the skin and puncture the cricothyroid membrane and quickly introduce the <clears throat> guide wire and place the tube without wasting much of time or allowing the patient to deteriorate into hypoxemic state. Okay, so these are the things that you have to remember in a simplified way as to how to do. And with the fiber optic scope being available nowadays mostly in all the institutions and many anesthetists getting trained both in workshops as well as as a routine. Earlier the definition itself was now Dr. Jaibardi said the physician trying to intubate is the word she used but the earlier definition says a conventionally trained anesthetist when he finds it difficult to mask ventilate or intubate the trachea that airway is defined as difficult airway. What is the meaning of the conventionally trained anesthetist? He is trained only to use the routine Macintosh or the Megil's laryngoscope and then try to visualize the glottis and try to pass the endotracheal tube through that. But the <clears throat> modern day anesthetists, they are trained not only in using that older type of Megils or Macintosh laryngoscope, but also you are nowadays routinely using video laryngoscopes, you are even using uh, fiber optic on and off. So, all these training have changed the definition from a conventionally trained. I think it should be now written that if the uh, anesthetist trained with the modern gadgets, if they still they find it difficult to intubate or maintain the mask ventilation, then that should be defined as a difficult airway rather than the older definition of a conventionally trained anesthetist. But as she rightly said, an emergency situation where you cannot intubate or mask ventilate is the ideal time for any learner to start a new technique. Even for video laryngoscopy, if you are not used to that instrument before, 
an emergency situation is not the time to learn how to do the uh, conventional intubation with the video laryngoscopic intubation so all these things should repeatedly be trained so they should have training in using these gadgets so that they can achieve a successful intubation uh, in time in terms of dire states of uh, hypoxia and uh, the other methods of maintaining oxygenation when you are able to prolong the or prevent the hypoxia occurring that is called the safe apnea period so for that only we are nowadays using high flow oxygen the tri uh, apneic oxygenation technique all these things have been incorporated in difficult airway also so that we avoid the problem of uh, global hypoxia setting in this patient okay right thank you sir thank you i think the next topic is a huge one yes sir uh, so we will have it in the next class